this is the, the courtyard of the castle. And talking about this courtyard, it was one time a graveyard for Europeans only. Europeans only. But the interesting thing is, this is the only Ghanaian, or let's say the only African the Europeans buried among them. The name is Philip Kweku. Philip Kweku was born in Cape Coast around 1741. Age 11, he had the scholarship to England where he was trained and educated at Oxford. 1765, he was made a priest in London. He became the first African to become a priest for the Anglican Church. He returned as a teacher, a missionary, and a reverend minister. So listen to this part very well. Reverend Philip Kweku, the African minister, returned to this place at the peak of the transatlantic slave trade. He returned at the same time that they kept people in the dungeons. He led an all-European congregation upstairs whilst his fellow Africans were right underneath him in chains and in shackles. On record, he didn't say anything for the slave trade. He didn't say anything against it. I say he was a victim of the system. You see, when the Europeans came here initially, they took some, some smart African boys from this place to either France, Germany, England. They didn't send them there to be trained as doctors, lawyers, or engineers. They only sent them there to be trained as priests. So for them to further their cause of slavery and colonization, they have to use their religion to justify that it is good. There's nothing bad about it. So now, again also, they used religion to show us the Africans how supreme, superior, and powerful the white man was than the black man. Because they propagated that yes, God and Jesus was in the image of the white man. So it happened that as a result of what the local people were fed, they developed a certain oral saying, oral tradition, oral history. I'll say that in Fanti, then I translate to English so that we all understand. So the locals developed this. If you are going to church and on your way you see a white man or a white woman, don't go to church again. You've seen your God. Go home. So religion was used as a tool, Christianity was used as a tool to further enslave us more or, you know, for them to widen this, you know, that inferior superiority thing. Uh -huh. So that is what we had here. Philip died 1816 at the age 75. And also, he's one of the people who sustained the Western form of education here. So when we talk about classroom or Western education, then we are looking at the first one in this country. The church was also a classroom. But note, not anybody at all was allowed to school there. Let me tell you this. It wasn't in the minds of the Europeans to give the Africans the Western form of education. It happened by accident because the Europeans intermarried with some of the local people here and had kids with them. So the Europeans realized that there was that need for their kids to be educated. So for you to have the chance of attending the school, first of all, this is the criteria. You should be a light skin or a mixed race. You should bear the name Smith, Johnson, McLean, Van der Poel, Samson, Rudolph, Hesse, before you were eligible to attend the school. Later, the missionaries also wanted to further the cause of colonization and Christianity. So they started schools. So it became a school for all. Because through the education system, then your mentality about yourself and your way of living before they came will now change or switch. So that is what we had here. So Western education in this country started right here in this building. And later, they built schools outside this place. So Cape Coast has the first primary junior high school and senior high schools in the country. 
And still has more. That's, yes, still has more. Yeah. <laughs> and I think in Ghana, everybody would want to come to Kipu. Exactly.